Hello, everybody. Stu Smith and Jeff Nichols here with another tactical fitness report. And this was a fun one. I, I think you'll like this one. This one we're going to focus on, you know, I guess rebounding from boot camp, right? And depending on which uh, service you're in and what job you're going to do afterwards, you know, you may be blessed with a preparation course before harder challenges. So, for instance, you know, Navy has pre buds. I guess it's also pre-SWIC as well, right. pre-diver. They all kind of move into this press course. You know, yeah. the Air Force has a battlefield airman prep course. That's uh, really good. Um, you know, the Army. Army has a great little progression, you know, the, the yeah. way they've set it up, you know, especially if you're going into the special ops process. Yeah, you guys can expect just, 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 to, just to kind of front load you just a little bit. Uh, and, and this is prompted after a really good conversation I had with one of my former clients and, uh, he just graduated army boot camp. And again, this, this is not to undermine or, or disrespect our branches of service. This is just to kind of give you guys a little bit of insight on how boot camp for some people, um, will be difficult. Some will be easy and some will just be you probably you're going to get into this a little bit you're, you're going to detrain a little bit and so that's what we mean by rebounding is like okay what do we do after boot camp now the answer is it depends on a couple of things one thing that depends then just again the preface so this this particular individual is a former bodybuilder professional bodybuilder started at 300 pounds got him down to 240 without a guaranteed contract because the army does a little bit different but Based off of his performance at boot camp, he was offered an SF contract, and boom, now he's going, right? He's doing it at 30, awesome. 36, I think. Nice. So performance is key, right? And now, so the idea is, guys, is, you know, the conversation, he was a bit worried. He's like, what do I do? Because, you know, you're still into that new Army process where you don't have a lot of freedoms, right? right. You don't just get to go out in town and get a gym membership. You're – you're pretty much quarantined to your little space. Maybe get a weekend pass. Uh, same in the Navy um, in that regard. But the thing is, is not is all, not all is, is it's not a crisis. And this is why for him in particular, or any of the guys that Stu deals with and sends and, and then goes off is that, that if your training program prior to boot camp is really solid and you don't go into boot camp terribly overtrained, and there's a reason why you're going to rebound quickly, right? Because your body knows what good training is and good living is. You go through boot camp. I'm not saying it's bad. It's just different. Now, when you get out, now this conversation that Stu and I are going to go back and forth is like, what are some steps to put in place upon graduation of boot camp? That's what we're going to talk about. Right. So, yeah, let's, let's just make this, you know, just for the sake of argument, just all the people we're talking about are getting ready for some prep course into special ops. So yes. whether you're yep. army, Navy, air force, Marines, you are getting ready to go to that future prep course. Right. right. So, um, here's, here's what I recommend. I always recommend people to go to boot camp really ready. I mean, be, be like you're ready to go to buds on day one of boot camp. Yeah. Then, the number one goal of boot camp, because you're going to get out of shape, you're going to detrain. It's just the way it is compared to what you have been doing. Now, there will be some people who are doing more than they've ever done in their life, and boot camp will be very challenging phys physically to them. That just happens. It's, you're going to have two different types of people in that group. Yeah. Um, and, that, and, that, that, and that's one of the unique problems boot camp has to solve every class you know they have a and here's why people get out of shape at boot camp or they get in the best shape of their lives at boot camp is because you have a big group of people dip varying levels of fitness doing this workout program that is fairly basic and you know you're going to get through this training you're going to graduate that's why most people tend to lose a lot of weight if they were you know overweight with uh you know extra body fat or they lose a lot of muscle mass because they're just kind of detraining and i think that's what you just said that your guy did lost some muscle mass due to detraining um 
and you know, it is a stressful environment. So it's not the best recovery tool that there is out there though compared to what you were doing, you will have some form of recovery and deloading phase in there. And, And I just tell people treat it like a deloading phase and you're just, you know, try not to get too out of shape. Right. right. And the number one thing I always tell people is try not to get sick. Yeah. Just that's, that that's, is the biggest, yeah. biggest that's one. The there. number one reason why we don't want you training to maximal intensity that seven to 10 days out from boot camp. Yeah. If nothing else for the immune system, yeah. if you show up and this is the exact conversation I had with him before he went in, I was like, chill out seven to 10 days. You know, do some calisthenics, focus on your diet for gut health, immune function, right? That's what we're training for seven to 10 days out. Well, he showed up to boot camp. He got moderate chest congestion twice, whereas many other people in boot camp got bronchitis and pneumonia. So everyone's going to get sick. But if you show up to boot camp with a compromised immune system by training too intensely too long, no, no. So be very clear. I want you guys training intensely, just not that seven to 10 day window, right? Go in healthy to boot camp. Yes. That will, yeah, you're going to get the sniffles. You're probably going to get a cough. You might even get the flu, right? But if you know your body has is, is got a good, strong immune system going in, you're not going to get the 104, 105 fever that I had. Again, I, that's the thing is I trained intensely up until about four days prior to my boot camp. I paid for it. I got super sick. I tell you what, I mean, even if it's just luck, really, not getting sick. But if you can, you can do a few things that will help you. Um, I mean, because germs are coming from all over the United States into yeah. one Living barracks. Yeah. And you're going to touch sinks. You're going to touch toilets. You're going to touch doorknobs. I mean, everything you touch, you just got to remember, is going to be covered with germs. Yes. And next thing you know, if you touch your face, you pick your nose, you put your fingers in your mouth, eating your Damn nails, over. you're just putting a pen in your mouth. Just yeah. There's all those things you don't realize that are really, they add up. Like just yeah. biting your fingernails might not be an issue at boot camp, but you bit your fingernails, you sit down at a desk, you t- all these sort of things. Just expect right now, it sounds crazy, expect to get sick. And the only thing that you've got, folks, leading up to it is don't go in over train. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And wash so, your hands. Don't go yeah. in over train, wash your hands and don't even touch your face at all. Like <laughs> don't, not either. even this get, get not, out of the habit. Yeah. You know, with your, with your sleeves. Okay. So moving on, we think yes. we killed that one. <laughs> so just kind of giving you his story, right? Again, he just graduated and I, I misquote. I told Stu off camera, he got to two Oh seven. I think it was two two twenty seven is what he got. Okay, not two oh seven. So went from went into boot camp just over two forty, came out around two twenty something because we were about so this is the first time he and I've ever been the same weight, and I was two two twenty two. So that's where he was at, wow. give or take. My point is, is that now what do we do? Like, what direction did I give him? My direction I gave him is this: when you went into boot camp. Only a couple weeks prior, 10, 13 weeks, nine, whatever it was, it's very clear in your head what you were doing. Don't do that. It's too intense. So I say give yourself a 14-day upswing. For the first seven days, right, do moderate running beyond what you did at boot camp, just a little bit more, a little bit more calisthenics, right? Don't do anything intensely. Don't do anything where you're out of breath and out of straining. The likelihood of you getting sick still is extremely high. Or injured. Tendinitis pops exactly. up real Exactly. Now quick. is not the time to put the screws to yourself. Yeah. A week later, let's go up to that 75% output of, you know, when you do go to the gym, if you do go to the gym, just do a total body twice a week. Just do a round robin. Focus a little bit more on moderate running on a track or an open road, again, moderate. Mix in with a fair amount of push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, dips for those 14 days, those 14 training days, okay, give it or give or take. Then you can start beginning to see some resemblance of how you felt, like in just in recovery rate, right? Your appetite should come back up, all those sort of things. 
But if you rush too soon, you're going to create an injury or an illness that's going to set you back at least another couple of weeks. Yeah. So be cautious. Be, be, it's way better to be safe those two weeks out of boot camp than just paying for it out if you just go too fast. Yeah, absolutely. Rebuild your cardiovascular, you know, events that you're going to be taxed with. If you got to swim, you know, get in the pool. That's going to be a great one. Run, you know, once again, moderate progression. Don't jump in where you left off prior to boot camp. Right. Because you were probably crushing it then, you know. So take take it back a, a notch or two and rebuild. Rebuild with a, you know, calisthenic base and, you know, running and swimming. If you're If you're going to be doing a lot of rucking, you know, maybe do a 25 pound ruck just to start progressing with the weight as well. You know, you're going to progress with mileage. You're also going to progress with weight. Um, you know, something I, and, and if, when you do go to the gym, like Jeff said, a couple of days a week, I mean, keep it simple. Maybe pick five lifts, do three sets of 10. Yep. You keep know, it each super simple. Lift. Nothing, nothing hardcore. Yep. Keep your intensities down. Keep your, don't don't go anywhere off your previous one RMs, folks. Don't yeah. go anywhere near your previous three RMs. Yeah. Maybe if you treat your five RM as a one and then go from there, maybe. But that just gives you an idea. Yeah. Of where again, and even off that five RM, you don't need to be working anything higher than maybe let's let's say seventy percent of that five RM. Yeah. For a volume that really is just you get in the weight, you do some reps. You get a little bit of blood flow and fatigue, maybe just a semblance of a pump, and you leave. Yeah. And you, yeah. you will see less is more in this case, you know, especially in these, this two-week window when you're trying to rebuild. Um, you, you'll see less is more, and you'll start rebuilding some of that mass that you Fast. lost. You know, That's the thing is this quick. two weeks, we'll call it, it's to convince your body that, hey, I gave you a break. Remember this stimulus that we have to adapt to and overcome and, and, and achieve? Hey, remember this, a little bit of a dose for a week. And go, oh, body goes, oh, more nutrients, more sleep, hopefully. Give it a stronger dose the second week, okay? And so now some of you will have it a bit easier than others as per the system, the way it's set up. So the contrast between the Army and, yeah. say, the Navy, for example, the Navy, I will say, has uh, – quite the advantage and the reason why the Navy has quite the advantage in this regard is because the professionals that are at the Great Lakes boot uh, boot camp for the uh, for what's the name prep the, course prep course yeah. there yeah. we go the, the, Bud's the, prep course. the two the two that Stu and I met for sure at the last TSAC they've got it wired oh yeah so my suggestion I know you've heard Stu and I say this before all the more reason to go into boot camp prepared because their guy basically primary ready to do is get you ready for buds in the PST as quick as possible because they only have 10 to 12 weeks. If you show up under trained and overly sick coming out of boot camp, it's going to make their job nearly impossible. They're not magicians, folk. They're strength right. coaches. Okay. So, and they're good. So Navy do them a favor, go in to boot camp healthy so you can come out to a boot camp a little bit healthier. You can yeah. get back on track faster, get into the program at buds prep and, Seam seamless that's let the guys at prep navy prep do what they do and they do it well yes. they yeah they they will definitely take you from post boot camp to pre-buds you know the way the way it's supposed to happen i yeah. wish they had more time with you yeah be honest with you just because i've, I've seen it to, and, and it's not their fault it's it's the process prior to boot camp that yep. that's the issue is because here's what happens. You spend all your delayed entry program getting ready for a PST, right? And you just barely meet those standards to get into, into the SEAL or SWIC program, right? Now you go through boot camp, right? And guess where those minimum standards are? You know, you, you have detrained yourself doing, during boot camp. Now you can't meet the minimum standards to be SWIC or SEAL. And so you lose your contract. You can lose your contract at that first PST of prep. Yeah. Right. And, you know, or you're just barely squeaking by because, you know, you just, you've deloaded so much or you're, you know, fighting illness and, you know, still coming off of that, that you're, you know, unfortunately unable to, 
to have a, a higher standard on that fitness test. So like I said, I always recommend people just crushing that fitness test long before depth. They spend depth, you know, focusing on, you know, even a bad day, they can pass the PST, right? So they're focusing yeah. more on getting through the training. For sure. And they make it through boot camp. They deload a little bit, even on a bad day, they can still pass that fitness test because they've done it so many times, right? And, yeah. and have, have, have hit a level of where that, you know, they can pass a PST like they pass a drug test, right? They should be able to wake up one morning and say, Hey, you got a urinalysis, you know, 5 AM or Hey, you got PST 5 AM. Let's go do it on a whim any day, right? That is where you need to be at this level. And what that does, that makes preps job so much easier for sure. Right. And, and they can take that, they can take your foundation that you built and got it ready for them to take it to another level where now you are ready for buds. So that's, that's, and the air force does the same thing. You know, air force has modeled their airfield, uh, battlefield airman prep course, you know, to the same, um, way that the Navy seal SWIC is, is done there. So, you know, yeah, folks, nothing, we, nothing but positive things about that. That has made the Navy better. Yeah. That prep course for sure. And, and again, we, we could, we could discuss and, and talk about, and there's a lot of people, well, yeah, but what, if, there's a lot of, yep. But what ifs you can't change the fact that you got to go to Navy boot camp? You're not going to change what Navy boot camp needs to provide all those sailors that you're a part of you. When you join the Navy, you are a sailor first Yep. before you're ever spec war. Okay. So don't, in, in me included, won't, I'm not going to begrudge the boot camp system when I realize that those are the constraints that we all had to work under. I'm like, it was funny. I'm sitting there complaining about it and realized Stu and I both, and, and well, me for sure, went through Navy enlisted boot camp, experienced it, got super sick, had to rebound on my own. Fortunately, I had the knowledge uh, from my previous world to apply it. Didn't mean I listened to my own advice sometimes, but I'm telling you right now that if I had to do it all over again, I would do it differently. And I would do it the way that I'm explaining it. And I've, in a way that Stu and I have explained it to candidates that have successfully navigated it. And I say successfully, I'm saying they did it healthy, as healthy as possible, right? They physically prepared, they got through it. They didn't have any hiccups uh, and there wasn't a lot of surprises. There's going to be some surprises because you're going to know it. And that's why it's like you get out with Navy boot camp or army boot camp. And you, when you came in, you were, you know, you were crushing the PST and it let's, let's say you do, let's say you do go, well, I'm going to just dust off my old boots two days after boot camp and go try it. And you're like, oh, I just, I'm piss poor. What do we do? Well, if you were before coming to the Navy boot camp, if when you started training for buds, you know, 18 months prior, that's probably what you look like, you know, felt like you were performing, but not very good. Well, you got a boot camp. You're like, well, I'm a high performer. What the heck? What the heck? Yeah. Two weeks later, if you do, if you, if you heed the advice of Stu and I, you're going to be right back to your baseline or damn close. Yeah. So your and, body and will prep, Yeah. And Bud's prep knows that too. Yes. And they are. And I tell you, everybody I talk to that's at Bud's prep who has, you know, prepared logically for their challenge love buds prep yeah. I mean, for many it's the first time ever they're getting paid to work out for a living yeah and it's fun you know it's fun to, i mean you're not getting paid a lot but you know you're working out your for job. a living that is your job well, welcome to your job again a pillar one of the pillars for military service is physical fitness yeah yes you you should be working out you should be training every day i don't care what your job is nope you, Every job, the yeoman should be training each day. Why? Because they're being paid every single day to do that. Yeah. No yeah you never know. Emergencies happen. You know, that's no. what tactical fitness is. Can you save another person's life? Yep. You know, can you For get sure. somebody out of a dangerous situation by carrying yep. him or dragging him or, you know, whatever, you know, that, yep. that requires a bit of fit, fitness. So yes, a hundred percent agree, Jeff, uh, the buds prep program, also, you know, after talking to some of those guys at the last TSAC that uh, ran and created the Air Force Battlefield Airman Prep course, which they're doing some really cool things, a lot technology-driven uh, monitoring just about everything, calories in, calories out, 
using Omega waves, you know, heart rate monitors. I mean, they, they, they really know what's going on with each right. of their, their students. So they're, they're keeping track of a lot of information and no, and they know how to use that kind of data. So, which yeah. is kind of exciting to go, yeah, because here's the deal, you know, there's not there. I would should, should say 10 years ago, there was not a lot of information about military law enforcement, firefighter fitness, uh, programming the physiology behind it, you know, what the guys are enduring both on a physical level and as a uh, mental and stress level. Now there's a ton of it in the last decade and it's gotten nothing but better. And right. that's what these prep courses are founded on. You know, they're founded on tactical fitness principles that are going to help you get through the next phase. Yep. So, yeah. And so on, on that, not a, not a planned segue, but that segue of getting to the next phase outside of the physical, then when you get out of boot camp, what other things should we focus on more than anything right now out of the gate, outside of just easing back into the water, probably the most important thing to do is get your immune system back in order. And the best way to do that is by what you eat. Now, Many of you are going to be confined to the Navy galleys or cafeterias or whatever terminology you're calling it, okay? Your focus has got to be lean meats, leafy green vegetables, and cutting back, cutting, don't, again, don't begin introducing a lot of artificial sweeteners and sugar and refined uh, starches, I mean, refined wheats, excuse me, yeah. and, and flours, Stick with your whole whole vegetables. Stick with your meats. Again, you're going to be limited, but there, I've been in enough Navy or Army cafeterias to know that there are options, yeah. right? And then it becomes supplementation of those options. Now, what I'm saying, I know even in the Army, supplements at the point of post boot camp and this transition phase before airborne and all those sort of things, you, they still don't want you to have supplements. Fine. Doesn't mean you can't eat yogurts. You can't go to the you know can't go to the uh, the commissaries and get your yogurts and your sauerkrauts to yeah, supplement extra fruits and vegetables. Yep. Key extra fruits, extra vegetables. Those again, like well, you just said sugar. Yes, but natural sugars in context with the enzymes and the natural fibers. One of the best things for gut health are fruits yeah. in moderation. Okay, like the sugar and fruit. No, not a problem. Juicing something, not the best for squeezing. You want the fiber. You need the fiber and the enzymes. So don't want to remove that. Um, so again, lean meats to the best of your ability. Again, this is all going to be better than what you probably can get at boot camp because options have now expanded. I'm yes. not saying it's perfect. Right. But when you're giving a little bit, given a little bit more latitude in your choices, begin to make better choices or choices you were making. Right. Yes. So gut health through what you eat. And then the next thing is, okay, the one really cool thing about Navy boot camp for me experience is it put me on a good sleep awake cycle. Like I wasn't going to, I'm not going to get up at 5 a.m. if I don't have to, but getting up at 7 a.m., damn, feels like I slept in. Yeah. I'm still ready to go to bed by 10, 1030. Don't yeah. get off cycle. Just remember because that transitional phase of, of Bud's prep at Great Lakes is the opportunity for you to stay on that cycle. So when you go to buds, it's not readjustment. Yeah. Stay on cycle. That sleep, sleep good, healthy, like, you know, rise at seven, go to bed. I might probably have to get up earlier to do, do duty at a school or whatever else, but don't, don't stay up till three o'clock in the morning and try, you know, just don't, it's, it ain't going to help you. No, so. good point. Good point. In fact, um, I'm going to share my screen here, Jeff, because you gave yeah. me a, a idea. Jeff and I, at our last uh, conference that we uh, spoke at, um, our Human Optimization and Resiliency Conference, we posted this. And now, this isn't a scientific uh, understanding of recovery, but in my opinion, it, it kind of helps you it's label fair. things <laughs> a little bit um, uh, a little bit clearer and, and just kind of shows the importance of, of what sleep is to recovery. I mean, yep. sleep is your number one recovery tool. So I made it half of recovery. Some people say 40% and they'll go 40% with nutrition and then yep. they'll make these two 
five percent, ten percent. I've seen yeah. that before, but I said screw it. Half of my half of my recovery is to sleep, and then the other forty percent right. is nutrition. That means food, water. You got to hydrate. You got to take uh, well vitamins in your food. You know that you're going to be eating natural foods. Number one source. If you like, disregard the supplement side for where you yeah. guys are at, at the military process. Um, but then, you know, there's also ice, heat, stretching, mobility. Those are all going to help you. And that's stuff that you can do during, during boot camp as well. Yeah. You know, just to, you know, you can't do a whole lot of workouts, stretch, you know, keep, stay, stay limber. Right. For and sure. then gear and outsourcing services. This little missing 5% here is, you know, compression pants and foam rollers, um, car buffers, you know, if you need a massage, you know, massage therapist, chiropractic work, you know, all of that stuff. So right. think about recovery in this sense and that you can definitely where you are post boot camp, do at least 95 to 98% of this, you know, by getting a good night's sleep, eating, going to the commissary, topping off your galley food with uh, some fruits and vegetables, um, and then and add you know, a little extra protein, yeah. a little bit. Again, get, go back to the things that, to some of those comfort foods that you that you did like, right? I'm not saying eliminate some of those snack foods. Like again, keep the nuts, nuts, nuts up, and avocados, and you know. And I'm also not saying you shouldn't have cheat meals. That's because now you can. You're at a boot camp. You can yeah. eat some stuff. So don't don't starve yourself from that. But just have the mindset of like, I'm getting out of boot camp. I'm going to this transitional period where I've got to recover. Give yourself every opportunity. You will see, you, you have my word, within a few short weeks that fit perfectly within your timeline, you'll be right back to where you left off. And then at Navy boot camp side or the, you know, the Bud's Prep, you'll see that your performance will, if you get healthy, get back on step, Give yourself to these these professionals, at, and you'll see them push you push you past, push yep. you get you ready for really ready for buds. Let them go to work. The best thing to do is let them go to work, and the best thing you can do is get yourself healthy. There you go. Love it. So that, folks, is the best advice that I think that we can deliver and understand. Hopefully, you can you can listen to this and go. There, well, if you're sitting there going, well, what exactly do I do? You're missing the point, <laughs> okay? What exactly you do is exactly what we said. You've got, to, you've got to learn. That's the thing is at some point in this process, folks, you've got to have a teacher like Stu and I or the guys at Great Lakes be able to give you direction and go, I can apply that. I understand what's going on. That to me is you learning the process rather than just being spoon-fed because the, at the point of graduation of boot camp, you will never be spoon fed again. Learn it now. Learn to take direction. Learn to understand that there's not absolutes because when you show up to Bud's Prep and the Bud's instructors or the Bud's Prep guys, they don't have time to spoon feed you. They've got another couple hundred people they're managing. Yeah. Learn your own process and then listen, listen and follow their directions and it will work. And if you're so confused as to what directions are given, it's time to do some studying, understand basic terminology. Yeah. Okay. You know, the last thing you want to be is dropping out of the program, you know, at Bud's prep, you know, because yeah. that happens too. You yeah. Know, people are just not, um, you know, prepared enough to, you know, handle the deload of boot camp and still being able to perform. Like there, there's a level of fitness that is required. And a lot of people don't understand what that level of fitness is. Right. right? You can take two months of boot camp and come down here and still be crushing the PST or at least, you know, be above average. Right. It may not be where you were up here, but this is still above average. Right. Whereas if you come in here, Right, and then have a boot camp and drop you down to here, you might be borderline failing. Yeah. Yeah. So. The point is, folks, we can't remove, nor do we want to remove boot camps. They are necess they are a necessity for military service. They're valuable. They might be a little bit frustrating for some of us, but you need to have that dose of this is this is bigger than me. 
Yes. I'm in the Army. You're not in the Rangers. You're in the Army. You're not in the SEAL teams. You're in the Navy. Take that dose of reality. Take what it gives you, right? Move on. Yep. That's it. Don't make excuses. Don't wonder how somebody that you're – you've got to take care of yourself. And the best way to take care of yourself is treat yourself right and listen to the people that are, are giving you a direction, okay? So give yourself that opportunity and do it. And the best way to do all that is healthy. Yes. <laughs> Do it healthy. Stay healthy. Recover. You know, if you can recover properly, your immune system is going to be higher. Yes. Your performance level is going to be higher. Right? For sure. It's it's just your 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 amount of injuries or overuse injuries is going to be lower. You know, all of those things, it it comes down to recovery. So practice it. Practice right now, folks, taking care of yourself. Practice. Treat treat yourself like you're sick all the time when you're training intensely. Yeah. If you treat yourself, what I mean by that, hydrate, eat, whole foods, macronutrients, micro, get it all, sleep right, treat yourself, treat, like when you're sick, why don't we treat ourselves? All of a sudden, vitamin C and hydration becomes important. Yeah. What do you think training intensely is? You're putting a similar stressor on your body as if you were sick. Yep. Treat yourself like you're sick. I tell right. people all the time, after sweating profusely like I've been doing for the last 10 days, because it yeah. has just been hot and humid this uh, last week of August, yep. and uh, you, know, you got to treat dehydration like the flu. You bet. You, know, you betcha. Super hydrate. Otherwise, it will turn into the flu. <laughs> yeah. It will. Yeah. Like, that was the cycle I was on every four months, man. I got, I got the flu, then I got bronchitis, then I got pneumonia. Every four yeah. months, man. I just – not every four months. There's a period for about three years. That's kind of was my cycle. But. Yeah. I would say in my twenties when I was rocking and yeah. uh, just burning the candle at both yeah. ends. That's exactly. You always had the sniffles, didn't you? Just always yep. had mucus. Yep. Yeah. Always spitting, always blowing your yep. nose. Yep. That's your immune system folks saying, yep. Hey, give me some time. Give me some time right. off. Yep. So hopefully that I, I, I really do. We, I'm certain that Stu feels the same way. This, I think this is valuable, but it's only valuable if you apply it, folks. I can't do it. We cannot do it for you. Yeah. And sometimes, look, you know, we, we talk about, you know, hardcore being tough and not quitting and, you know, working out when you don't feel like it. But you know what? There are some days. Yesterday. That less is more. Yeah. Less yeah, that is was, more. You know, if any of you saw my post yesterday, like I was – hell bent on training and I looked at my he's like man why am I tired I actually pulled my calendar out and backtracked the last day I had off was Tuesday yes when we were all out here and I was I like thing. that's seven days in a row off day and yes. my off day then because I still really wanted to train my off day became I mowed I mowed with a vest on yeah you know, you know I know just what? that's funny you mentioned that you know what I did today Mobility day. <laughs> yeah, Wednesday. Because yeah. I realized I had not done a mobility day for three weeks. And, uh, Perfect. And I, and I felt it. Perfect and timing. I felt it really bad today. You know, everything's – and plus I've been sweating five pounds, losing five pounds every workout for the last yeah. eight days. Yeah. To and, think that that's not a difficult thing for the human body to get back to baseline, folks, just replace it. You don't just like – Five pounds out, get five pounds of water and drink and go, we're all good. No, that's not that. Well, that's the start. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't mean it's fixed. Right. Okay? So take care of yourself, folks. I mean, it's, it sounds goofy and it's very hard to define finitely of like what that means. But, well, the human body is not simple sometimes. And sometimes taking care of it can be equally complex. Yes. I'm looking forward to – Thursday and Friday and Saturday workouts now after a Wednesday mobility day. Right. You know, whereas had I worked out today, I'd be like, Oh God, what do I got to do tomorrow? Yeah. Same. I'm, I'm super excited to lift legs today. Yeah. Cause I know yesterday I had a good walk, a good walk with a mower, right. For an hour, heart rate was up, but I needed some time off, but I didn't feel that it just, and I get it folks. We don't want to feel sedentary. We don't want to feel like a day off has been a day lost in training so those off days, find a way around it, right? I didn't peg the nervous system. I didn't screw with it. I, every 15 minutes, I drank uh, probably 20 ounces of ice water during my mowing. I had sunblock on. I had yeah. gloves on over my hands to minimize some of the vibration. I, like I just went, all of a sudden it hit me yesterday and go, yep, 
I am becoming that old dude that is just really hell bent and not dying young. <laughs> That's kind of not, I'm not being trying to be morbid, but my thing is like, man, like I, I can turn this mowing experience into something useful, but I'm going to take, I had a long sleeve. I had a long sleeve shirt on out in my, when I, it was a silk weight. Like, uh, I always wear long sleeves. Yeah. Sunburn, I, I hate sunburn. So, so yeah. Put on some music that I, it's funny enough, the album I listened to is the exact, is like, it'd been a long time, long time since I heard out. Last time I heard the album I listened to this particular album, I was in sniper school and it was just really cool. Cause I'm sitting there mowing, listening to song and reminiscing about that time and trying to be productive and, it was just, it was, I, I like mowing. It's kind of my Zen space. Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I can definitely handle some mindless activity. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So, all right, folks. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. I believe that it was and uh, enjoy. There you go. Hey, what to do after boot camp? There you go. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Jeff. Always. See